Jonathan India isn't going anywhere. And that's not even according to me. You are locked on Reds. Your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Reds, and my name is Jeff Carr. I'm a lifelong Cincinnati Reds fan that has turned an addiction into information for you. Steve Offenbaker is my co-host. He'll be along a little bit later on, just you and me, for the first little bit here as we talk about this Cincinnati Reds team with spring training going on. Practices are happening. Basically, the entire team is already in good year, getting ready for the season, and we continue to get news about Jonathan India. I'm going to talk about the big news that came out of camp today, the, the, the words that were said by a very important person when it comes to the Jonathan India trade rumors. We're also going to look at his contract and why I think it, uh, it kind of works both ways for Nick Crawl. And then we're also going to talk about, you know, Frankie Montas had a few things to say about the projections and what they say about the Cincinnati Reds. Also, Joseph Daniel Votto posted on Instagram, and it's pretty cryptic. Steve joins me later on to discuss exactly what that meant. Before we get to all of that, I wanted to let you know today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new users can get $150 in bonus bets with your first $5 winning wager. Just check out FanDuel.com or slash locked on to get started. And where we will get started today is with Jonathan India because the quotes came out from Goodyear, Arizona via an article from Charlie Goldsmith. He was actually just on yesterday. If you missed yesterday's Lockdown Reds podcast, make sure you go check that out. Charlie had a lot of great stuff. He's out there in Goodyear reporting from the scene. And he got the chance to talk with Nick Crawl. He got the chance to talk with Jonathan India. And it was confirmed that shortly before Reds Fest, Jonathan India was told by Nick Crawl that the trade rumors, because Jonathan India was concerned, he had heard these rumors, he had seen these, you know, these conversations on MLB Network of top landing spots for Jonathan India and stuff like this. So he was concerned. And Nick Crawl said, Don't worry about that. That's just talk. We are not looking to trade you. Nick Crawl told Jonathan India this. And I don't know about you, but I tend to believe it when the guy who makes the decisions tells the guy who he's deciding on what the decision is. And that means Jonathan India is staying in Cincinnati. Now, that was in December. Does that mean that that's forever? No. But the contract that Nick Crawl just signed Jonathan India to, I believe at least backs up what he said. He did not just give him an empty promise. The Reds went out of their way to make this deal. This is something that Charlie said yesterday on the podcast with us, is that the Reds typically operate when it comes to arbitration. If they cannot get a deal done before the arbitration deadline, then they file and trial. And what that means is the Reds give their numbers, the player gives their numbers, and then they go to trial. That's it. That's that's the end of it. They let arbitration do its work. They didn't do that here. And in fact, they didn't do that to the extent that, you know, most teams, whenever they sign a guy to avoid arbitration, they sign him for one year. They signed India for two years, two guaranteed years. And there's incentives and there's all this other stuff. So this is the Reds. This is Nick Crawl putting his money where his mouth is when it comes to Jonathan India saying, look, we're not trading you. And here is my commitment to that. I find that interesting because we continue to talk about India as if he is a continual trade piece right now. We did an episode a couple of weeks ago. I think it was, yeah, two weeks ago about this trade that the Minnesota Twins made to send Jorge Polanco to Seattle and the haul that they got back for Jorge Polanco, could the Reds have gotten something like that for Jonathan India? And if that were the case, they absolutely should have made a trade. But now it's looking 
Like, not only was that offer not on the table for the Reds, it sounds like Nick Crawl is basically saying thanks but no thanks to anyone who comes calling. And it's not based on what they are receiving in return. And chances are they're not receiving anything crazy. I think that Nick Crawl understands, as most general managers do in Major League Baseball, there's a price for every player. But he understands he doesn't need to trade Jonathan India right now because he is super cost-controlled, super young, still plenty of time to develop, still plenty of time to figure out who he is. And as much as it's hard to see his role on this team, as much as there he's a man without a position right now, he still has a pretty solid bat. And he still is a leader in this clubhouse. So this is the Reds telling him, we're not trading you, and we're backing it up with this contract. So, look, at this point, if you start to hear Jonathan India trade rumors, Nick Crawl has said, Nick Crawl has told Jonathan India, those aren't coming from him. They're just talk. And I kind of find that exciting. I don't know about you. Like I, I know there's been this, and it's a, it's a minority, but there's there's a small group of people in Reds country that have resigned themselves to just trade Jonathan India for whatever you get, just whoever's ready to take him on. I still think he's got more to give. I saw on Twitter there there was somebody that was comparing him to past players and his first three years of his career compare immensely favorably to the first three years of Brandon Phillips career. Now, Brandon Phillips was languishing in Cleveland. They didn't know where he fit on their roster. They didn't really do much with him. He didn't play a lot, but it's worth pointing out. Brandon Phillips turned out all right. And now maybe you, you're, you're definitely not comparing gloves here, but comparing the hitting statistics, Jonathan India was favorable to Brandon Phillips in the, his first three years. I would love to see him break out. The The plantar fasciitis is a little bit concerning. Uh, Charlie went into more detail in this article in the Inquirer about it, talking about this was something that he stayed off his foot for six weeks this offseason. Like, basically, as soon as the offseason began for the Reds, he stayed off that foot it was his, in his left foot. So that is concerning. But... Knowing this, the Reds know the Reds knew that before they made the contract deal, before they signed him for two years. Again, this is the Reds committing, showing their commitment to Jonathan India, showing their loyalty to a guy who, yes, his rookie of the year campaign was an exciting season for the Reds where they competed for a playoff spot, didn't quite make it, but it was a winning season. Then you go and, and, and you see the, the debacle that was 2022 and Jonathan India had to go through that. And then last year dealing with, you know, the foot injury and things like that, th- that's going to be the big thing for me when we're talking about expectations and, and making predictions about Jonathan India. I don't want to go there just yet, but what we're looking at is a, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the G word. A guarantee, Jonathan India is not being traded anytime soon by the Cincinnati Reds. Now, the contract, I think, works. I mean, Nick Crawl is hedging his bets a little bit. I'll put it that way. I, I'll explain more on that and why Frankie Montas is annoyed. That is coming up right after this. Because first, I want to tell you about one of today's sponsors, and that is Game Time. Game Time is the best way to get to the game. Whether you're talking about a Reds game, a Bengals game, a Bearcats basketball game, Bearcats football game, uh, the Cincinnati Cyclones hockey. If you want to check out events around town, if there's a show, maybe a comedy event, a a concert, or something like that, Game Time has you covered. They've got the last minute tickets at the lowest price, guaranteed. Tell you what you do, especially when it comes to sporting events, especially once we get closer to Reds opening day and and the season and all that great stuff. Not necessarily opening day. Yeah, it's always hard to find tickets to that. But the rest of the season, game time is your source. Go down to the banks. 
chill out at your favorite spot, your favorite watering hole, your favorite restaurant, whatever, and wait till close to game time, pun intended there, and check out the game time app. They'll have some great low prices on some last minute deals. And if you download the app today and you create an account, use the promo code locked on to save $20 off your first purchase. Game time has last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Thanks as always for making Lockdown Reds your first listen every single day. Every day is coming up on the show tomorrow. Steve will return. We will have an Aloha Live Friday edition of the podcast. Lots to talk about. This As spring training moves along, there's so many things to get to. And I know that we've talked a lot about Jonathan Indy these last couple of days, but there's still plenty of storylines to talk about. And we're going to jump into those on tomorrow's Aloha Live edition of the podcast. Plus, we will get to your questions and your comments as it will be an interaction show. And before we get uh, back into the India contract and why I think Nick Crawl is hedging his bets, I wanted to remind you that Locked On has created the first ever 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube where you can get all of the local perspectives on the biggest sports stories as well as the national perspectives of our league shows that cover every sports league. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. And uh, check out the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. All right. The two-year contract, $3.8 million in year one, 2024. $5 million with the possibility of making just over $7 million based on you know some performance things that Jonathan India could hit this year. But... A little over seven million if he hits all of those in 2025. That contract does two things. I talked about the loyalty. I talked about the commitment. The Reds are showing it to Jonathan India with this deal. However, should another team get interested enough to offer Nick Cross something lucrative, something a good right-handed outfield bat, for example? I don't know or another gr- another good starting pitching arm or something like that. This contract makes Jonathan India look a lot better in a trade. Now, I'm not saying that this means that the Reds are actively looking to trade for him. They told him they're not. Nick Cross said he's not. And I believe that Nick Cross is telling him the truth, and I have no reason to believe otherwise. But the contract itself gives him security, gives Jonathan India security, while also giving an opposing GM who would look to trade for him security and knowing exactly the number he's paying for, especially if India really breaks out this season. But again, this is Nick Kroll hedging his bets for two or for, for a big reason here. It makes him look better in a trade, but if he breaks out, then the Reds got him on the cheap next year. Because the way arbitration works is it, they base – a raise for a player off of comparable other players. They don't take a look at his salary, assign a percentage and say, this is how much percentage increase you're going to get based on how you played last year. They compare it to other players that had that type of performance in the, in that year and, and all that good stuff. So it could be an even better raise. Like $7 million could actually be less than what Jonathan India would make next year. And that's that's when he hits all of his escalators, he makes $7 million next year. That's guaranteed. So it's Nick Crawl kind of hedging his bets a little bit when it comes to Jonathan India. I wrote about this over at InsideTheReds.com. I invite you to go bookmark that website. As I'm writing there, Steve is writing there. We're, we're talking about the Reds all the time, and James Rapine is writing over there. Caleb Sisk is doing a lot of great stuff looking at minor league players and guys to be excited for and things like that. Austin Elmore, Rick Uccino, InsideTheReds.com is a great website to have bookmarked. We're going to keep you covered all year. But when I, I looked at this, I said, look, this, this contract does two things. The loyalty, the commitment, the security that it offers India. But it still looks good if another team wants to come trade for him. So I don't think that the contract itself proves they're not trading him. The words that Nick Crawl told Jonathan India 
coupled with this contract means he's not being traded anytime soon. And if I had to expand on that, maybe I'm thinking I don't believe he gets traded this year now. Just based on what he said and and what this means. Look, if, if, if India breaks out, that only helps this team. A breakout does not mean trade him now. A breakout means that the Reds can allow other things to work out. If he's breaking out, especially if it's like in left field or something like that, think about how that could affect the rest of the ball club. Noel V. Marte at third base and McLean and Ellie up the middle. CES at first, J. Mark Candelario at first, one of them at DH when the other's at first. And you got Jonathan India breaking out in left field. Right now, the future is kind of uncertain in the outfield. Like, we hope that Will Benson can continue to develop, but he's going to hit a snag where he's either got to hit left-handed pitching or the Reds are just resigning themselves to a platoon there. If Jonathan India can take a step forward in left field in a position he's never played, then his value to the Reds skyrockets. And that doesn't mean they're trading him. And if it doesn't work out, if he doesn't play left field very well, then you're going to be trading him at his lowest value. And that doesn't make any sense either. So I could definitely see this being a case that Jonathan India does not get traded at all this year. And I think the contract kind of goes either way with that. And I think that's that that's a the, it's it's a brilliant move by Nick Craw. I really think Nick Craw has done so many smart things this off season, and this is just another one of those things. Uh, real quick, I wanted to mention this because I thought it was hilarious, and we we've unpacked. I'm not going to get into the Pakoda projections or the Zips projections or the, whatever the projection systems are about the Cincinnati Reds. You guys know my feelings on it. If you don't know those feelings. Uh, check out some episodes we did at the end of last week uh, where we basically just, yeah, we were not happy, Steve and myself. Uh, neither is Frankie Montas, for the record, because he was asked about the Pagoda projections, and he's just like, yeah, whatever. Those, those That's why you play the game on the field. They're saying that we're going to win 78 games. I'm going to win 20 by myself. So that's totally wrong. I love that. I love that bravado. That's some swagger right there from Frankie Montas. And look, he's a guy that's got a lot to prove on the mound, right? He's got to prove that that shoulder's healthy. He's got to prove that he is more like the 2021 Frankie Montas who pitched for the Oakland A's and not like the guy who pitched for the New York Yankees. But if he can do that, if Derek Johnson can bring him back and he's approaching 20 wins, which guys don't do nowadays, then this team's definitely going to the playoffs and is definitely beating those Pakoda projections or zips or whatever you want to point out, because they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying that the Reds are going to win around 78 games. Frankie Montes is like 78. I'm going to win at least 20 by myself. So I don't think that's right. I I love that. I love that bravado. I I can't wait to watch this guy pitch. All right, coming up, Joey Votto has posted yet again on social media and yet again, It's cryptic. Steve and I, Steve will join me here in just a moment, and we're going to unpack what we think it all means. Before we do that, I want to tell you about another one of today's sponsors, and that is FanDuel. As we switch from football season into basketball season, and we're looking ahead to baseball season, spring training's going on right now. So many great futures over at FanDuel can be had, or if you want to check out the basketball action that they've got there, so many great options are at FanDuel, and you got to check it out today. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and join in on the fun. New users who wager $5 and win get $150 in bonus bets back guaranteed. That That is the kind of odds that you will never get on a $5 wager. Just telling you. If, if, you're, if you're wagering $5 and you have the ability to win $150, you're wagering $5 on something that's not going to happen. Those odds are astronomical crazy, so go join FanDuel today. You can check out this future. The Reds have odds on making the playoffs or not making the playoffs. FanDuel has odds on the Reds making the playoffs at plus 140, which means that they, that, that's the underdog 
right? If there's a plus in front of the number, that means that it's an underdog pick. It's a value pick. I'm taking that all day. I keep telling you the floor of this team is a wild card team. They could win the division. Check it out today at FanDuel.com slash locked on again. New users who wager $5 and win can get $150 in bonus bets. FanDuel is an official partner of the NBA and the official sports book of Locked On. You can follow the show in between episodes. Follow us on X. You can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs. You can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked On Reds. There's no Fs in that. Plus, join the Lockdown Reds Discord page. Got a link in the description of today's episode. We would love to have you. A lot of great folks talking Reds baseball on the Lockdown Reds Discord page. All right, Steve, this, this Instagram post just has my mind boggling. And look, I think that's what he's wanting. I think that's what Joey is aiming for. He is doing his best to inform people without telling them anything at all. And he's, he's using this dramatic poem from, from Dylan Thomas that I have told you a million times. I hear Michael Caine saying it from interstellar, but I, I, we, we got to unpack this because in my estimation, this poem is about someone who is facing the end with ferocity, but he also responded to a commenter that said something to that effect. And he said, I'm not done. Help me. Yeah, the the idea, first off, Joey has gotten so good at just generating buzz with yeah. his social media posts. And, and this is definitely doing that. But when you look at this poem and, and break down basically what the heart of this poem is, it's that life is precious and you should, you know, be it should be fought for uh, at every turn. You should not give up. And if, if we're trying to read into this, which we are, yeah. uh, I don't think it means he's done. And in his comments there on that post, he said as much that he's not done. I think we can substitute life for career. And while the end of his career is near, he is not going down without a fight. He is busting his tail. He's working out. If you look at the picture, his gun is showing. He has been putting in the work and he is ready to play. And he is not just going to slink off uh, to the end of this career and not fight for one more day in the sun. And that's the way I see it. I think that Joey Votto is still angling for a job and he doesn't have one right now. Spring training is starting and this is not the place that I think Joey Votto wanted to find himself. But I think this also says that he's not going to hang it up. He's not going to give up and slink away. Uh, I think he's still working to find a job. Well, and you know, Joey's that guy. He wants to show up on, on the big day. And, you know, he wants to have that huge beard that he's had the last couple of years that he walks in. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, he's got a beard. And then he shaves it after the first day. Uh, but I, I, I'm with you. I, I understand that. So let's deduce this a little bit because you're right. I mean, beyond the commenter who he responded to and said, I'm not done. You also got a response from a good friend of his on Twitter who said he is ready to go and he's, he's ready and raring to go. So, I then take this to mean he has no offers. And as much as we might have heard rumors of different teams, whether they be the Brewers or the Angels or the Blue Jays or the Giants or the, you know, Los Angeles, you know, whatever, no one's really made him an offer yet. And that's probably frustrating him. And that's probably why we keep seeing these posts of, you know, he's, he's, he's taking it, you know, he's, 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 he's doing his best to, take it as a really good positive thing and really get better from it. But this also kind of tells me it's not close to happen. No. And we don't know what Joey's criteria is as he's gone out and tried to talk with teams or his, or his representation has gone out and tried to talk with teams. Uh, we don't know if he's only looking to go to somebody that's legitimately considered to have a shot to win the world series. I, I think that would be high on his list. Um, and obviously he's made clear that he wants playing time. He doesn't see himself as the 26th man on the bench. That's why he's not in Cincinnati. I think if he had just said, yeah, I recognize that I should only play once a week and, and sit down there and impart my knowledge on all the kids, he would still be here. So I think he's looking for a full-time gig and I think he's probably looking for a full-time gig with a winner. And and that situation has not presented itself. And along the way, every team we've seen him linked to has gone out and made other moves. The one I lost track of is if Toronto, uh, did they make a signing for a first baseman slash DH or they still have that hole to fill? 
I still think that that's there. I don't think they've made a move just yet. And that's, that's what kind of gets me a little bit because I, I think he's still got something left to give. I, I just wonder if this is the rest of the league. I, I think I'm with you. I think this is the rest of the league telling him what the Reds were basically telling. Maybe not to the extent. Maybe they're not saying, look, we want you to sit at the end of the bench and be baseball Santa Claus and have our young guys come down and ask for good hitting advice from you. But I also think that it's just not the role that he's looking for and he still fancies himself an everyday player. I, I just find this a little interesting because the rumors have quieted. And to be honest with you, the rumors have quieted on a lot of guys. Like the rumors have quieted on Cody Bellinger. And if Cody Bellinger doesn't have any like hot stove rumors rolling right now, then Joey Votto probably isn't even close. And we just saw a guy like Jorge Soler sign with the Giants. So their DH spot's pretty much full. Like, I think he's going to have to go to a team that he's more DH than first baseman, too. That's the other part of this. And I don't necessarily know that that's readily available, especially if you look at Toronto, where they got Vladimir Guerrero. Right. So you'd have to kind of shoehorn Votto into a role. And that's mm. that's just not what he wants. And it's it's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see what happens now. Does he go to, you know, they've had in the past the free agent spring training camp, right? Do we do we see Joey Votto show up there? Is he going to continue <laughs> to work out on his own? What's he going to do? You know, there's there's still some really, you know, good players available. As you say, uh, Bellinger still looking for a job. Uh, Blake Snell is still looking for a job. You know, the reigning National League Cy Young Award winner. Yeah. Still looking for a job. So this offseason has been very wonky. I blame the Dodgers. I will continue to blame the Dodgers. <laughs> this is Los Angeles' fault. And and we're just going to have to wait and see where some of these dominoes Gosh. continue to fall. But, you know, Joey Joey may not have a gig before opening day. And he's, then not what? Going, he's not going there, right? He's not going to the Dodgers, right? Like, I know he keeps a oh. residence in Los Angeles. He's not going to the Dodgers. Oh, they, and I don't think they have room for him either because, again, he'd be the 26th man on that team. Yeah. He would get pinch hit at bat every, you know, seven days. There would not be room for him to play. Yeah, that that's the tough thing. And, like, look, I, I love it. I love the poetry. Look, kudos to Joey Votto getting us to talk about poetry on an episode of Lockdown Reds. I mean, Mark that off your bingo card. If it was on your bingo card, I don't know what else is because that means there's some other weird stuff on there. But when you're talking about Joey Votto quoting Dylan Thomas, th this is an interesting thing because there are no active rumors out there as to where he's going to go. There are no, this is close. They've been talking to his, his agents and, and things like that. I just, I, I wonder where it's all going to go down. I feel like, we're heading for a week in spring training where it's just going to be like roster moves Armageddon week where everyone signs and maybe he signs during that week. But as for right now, Joey's not going gentle into that good night. All right, that'll do it for us here today on this episode of Lockdown Reds. Thanks so much for joining us. Like I said, coming up tomorrow, Aloha Friday, you get to ask some questions and give us your comments, give us your takes. It's going to be a listener interaction episode. We're also going to be talking about some other storylines in spring training. So many great red storylines going on right now. A lot of reds news coming out. We've been talking a lot about Jonathan India. We'll focus on some other guys on tomorrow's lockdown reds. Aloha live edition of the podcast, because we are always locked on reds every single day.